How would it feel to have a thriving fitness business and have the freedom to enjoy life at the fullest? Well, that is exactly what the Trainer Revenue Multiplier Show is going to give you. My name is Matthew Park. This is Amy Filer. Hey, guys. And we are here to serve. Welcome aboard, guys. Welcome to the TRM Show. My name is Matthew Park, and I have with me today, guys, a very special, unique, incredible guest. Her name is Linda Steven. She is from the USA, hence her nickname USA, as she knows very, very well. And she is a power woman. She is an IFBB pro athlete and an authority industry as far as midlife women. She is a mother of two wonderful teenage kids now who are all gone to school now doing their thing. She's a bioage athlete. She is an experienced educator in the industry as far as been, you know, coaching for over what, 10, 14, 15 years, USA, probably somewhere in there. You know? uh, yeah, about 12 years. 12 years in the industry, of course, coaching has a degree for your degree. She, of course, is, of course, now specialized in her niche around females over 50, of course, kind of helping them with more hormonal health and, of course, things like that to help them optimize in all levels of their life. So I want to welcome to the show, guys, someone close to home, a close friend, a close friend of for over five years now, the wonderful Linda Stevens. Thank you, Canada, since you're, you live in Canada. I do. I do. <laughs> for a little while. <laughs> so your journey, you would say it's funny because I kind of go back to when we first met, you know, at Super League back in the day, you know, and now we look now and no. it's amazing what has happened in the last five years for you. I know it's been pretty crazy and it feels like it feels like a long time ago sometimes that we met in 2017 at the Olympia at Super League, just as casual, having casual conversations about, you know, working out and life. And then you mm -hmm. asked me what I did for a living and I told you, and you're like, did you know that I'm a, I coach people like that? <laughs> Remember? And you were like, let's have a call. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and now look where you look things. It's, it's kind of funny because now you have midlife mastery, mm -hmm. you know, you've obviously you're now a six figure company, which is fantastic. You finally sold your house four and a half years ago, USA. Remember, remember your house back in yeah, the day? I know. <laughs> the inside joke back at the first began coaching. I know. Um, and now the kids are off in school. So kind of take us through the journey because, of course, when I first met you, you know, you were experienced. You had a lot of education. You were actually a very experienced coach, and you still are, you know. Mm -hmm. But your company wasn't very optimized for financially for a success at the time. You were at overwhelm. You want to tell us more about that, kind of where you kind of first began, USA? Yes. So after getting divorced in 2017, working at a gym as a trainer yeah. and realizing that I needed to make more money because I needed to sustain myself now that, you know, technically I was on my own. So in talking with you and realizing, you know, you said, you know, go your, I think one of your assignments was, you know, go find four gyms in the area that you could go work at and rent space at and take your clients and start your own gig versus working for somebody making, you know, 50 bucks an hour. So that's what I did. A little scary, very scary. I kind of didn't want to do it. I'm like, yeah, but it's so easy here and I'm comfortable. So, <laughs> but, but you know, I, the, the cool thing is that I pushed myself and I did it, you know, through all the anxiety and the emotions that, you know, change stirs up in us. Went to a gym. It was awesome. Loved it, but ended up coming around meeting somebody else a few months later who I ended up using renting space at his gym. And I've been there since 2018. I'm still using his gym. I was just there today training myself. So it's interesting how, you know, you leave, a door opens, but then, you know, another door opens somewhere else when you don't expect it. So that's that's the cool thing about about life and taking chances is that other opportunities present themselves that you couldn't see at the time when you were anxious and scared and nervous. But it was, it's been a great, it's been a great journey. And you, you know, I attribute it all the time. I tell you all the time, Canada, I wouldn't be here where I wouldn't be here without you because you always pushed me even when I pushed back and I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. And you were like, USA, you need to, this is what you need to do. And eventually, you know, I would do the things you tell me to do and it would work out well. So and that's, you know, that's where I'm at now is, you know, have a, I have a trainer who works for me now and does all the personal training so that I can do my midlife mastery and work one-on-one -on -one with my over 40, 50 women and, and take my business to the, to the level that I want to take it to. 
you know, it's it, your story is quite phenomenal because it's actually kind of inspiring because you were in a place where um, you were doing you were doing OK. Of course, it was overwhelming for you. But I remember the first call we had. It was kind of funny because you were you're working a lot of hours. You're working probably 40 hour work weeks. I was I was in I was train I was in the gym probably seven days a week, either teaching a class or I had, a you know, clients personal training. And of course, like at that time, it was like, where do you fit in learning or growth to build your company? You, you, you were doing probably two or three K a, you know, a month at the time and you were doing okay. But you mentioned like you had to support the kids. Now you had to venture on your own and that, you know, even sell that house you talked about back. That was kind of, it was funny. That was kind of the crutch in the very initial part was that kind of house. Yep. And you began to let stuff go and like move into this next level. And it was so cool to see. You know, you kind of move to like an uncomfortable zone, break past it, go to the next level. And now you're like an authority. You are an authority in the world for midlife women. You know, it's kind of cool. It is. It is very, um, it is very inspiring when we, you know, when we look back and, and look at all the things that we've accomplished over our lives, because I think sometimes we tend to, I know I do, we tend to discount ourselves or say, I'm not as smart as this person I just watched on Instagram or I'm not an MD or that person knows more than I do. And, and you know, more than anybody I, I've, I have battled and still do bat not battle, but still do deal with a little bit of imposter syndrome. I think it's a lot of women I've listened to that are, you know, much more successful than I am. People that are, you know, on TV and in, in the world that are more visible, but uh, you know, women tend to suffer with imposter syndrome more than men do, but it's just very interesting how, you have to look back and I, I'm a big fan of Joel Osteen and he talks about keeping um, to, to date myself a Rolodex, but keep that Rolodex of, of accolades and compliments that people give you. So when a client says, you know, you've changed my life, I couldn't have done this without you or someone you help someone and like, Oh my God, thank you so much. What you told me to do worked. And now I'm, I feel better. Or I'm stronger or, you know, anything like that. And you have to look back at those things and, and remember them and be like, you know what? I, I am good at what I do. People trust in me and I deliver. And sometimes I make mistakes. Maybe I don't do everything right all the time, but, but I do have an impact and I do know what I'm talking about. When you hit some of those barriers, mm -hmm. there's many, of course, you've been hitting, you hit over the years. What was like, that turning point, what happened for you when you crossed the barrier and kind of like evolved past it? When you cross the barrier or, or evolve past it, it's just like what I said before, you know, opportunities present themselves that you couldn't see before when you were sort of caught in the storm. And until you, when you allow yourself to sort of relax in the storm or be able to, you know, still function in the storm and you come out on the other side and you see like this, you know, bright, beautiful, blooming meadow field and the sun's shining and there's butterflies and birds chirping. And you're like, oh, okay. And it's, you know, and it makes you realize that we're struck, um, obstacles are put in our way for a reason. And, you know, whether you're spiritual or religious or whatever you believe in or whatever, but the universe, but I really do believe that there is a force that puts barriers and roadblocks in your way because it wants to see what are you actually really made of? And you need to, and we, you, me, everybody listening needs to see that. Like, what am, what am I made of? Can I overcome this? And then you overcome it and you, you, you know, you break into a whole new realm of possibilities, but then, you know, you go along great and then boom, it happens again. So it's just, it's just, I always say success is in a straight trajectory to, to the, to the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. What was a turning point for you, a big one that you can recall, the one that was probably the biggest aha moment or light bulb for you that really impacted you the most and also helped you grow the most? I would say when I launched my my Midlife Mastery course back in, I think, 2018, I did it twice. Yeah. And it was a great success. And then for some reason it took me a long time to get it ready and launch it again, which I am doing now. I just launched it yesterday. But I think that, you know, just, I think believing in yourself and looking back at the things that, that have given you success in the past and, and using that to sort of springboard into new success and new adventures and new endeavors that might be scary, but, and for some reason, 
it felt a little scary. You know, it took me a long, it's been a few years and it's taken me a while to, to get it launched again. But now I think everything just happens when it's supposed to. I really do. I think, you know, I think we just, we're set up to do things when we're supposed to do it. And if, if we're not ready, somebody knows and keeps us, but I'm ready now. And I feel really excited to go forward with it. How did finding a niche or a niche for you change your business around? Because I was trying to do, as you know, I was trying to do a whole lot of things at once. Yeah. I was trying to be, you know, a nutrition coach, a personal trainer. I was trying to do virtual stuff. I was working with lots of different people, you know, kids, men, women. I mean, I was just doing everything. And it's it gets overwhelming because and a lot of people say this, like find the one thing that you're really good at and then focus on that. Like that's where you'll see the most growth become, become an expert or knowledgeable in one thing and then deliver that, you know, get as educated as you can in it and then deliver that show the world that, you know, I never say I'm an expert cause I don't know everything. And that, that term makes me uncomfortable anyways, cause I might make a mistake I might say something wrong or I might not know something. And someone might be like, well, she's not an expert. She didn't even know that. So, but I think it's important to, to focus on that one thing that like you taught us in TRM way back when, you know, find your niche and all the, the experts that you brought in to talk to us, find your niche, get your 20 second pitch or whatever it is mm -hmm. and know, know who you are, know what you're doing and, and focus on that versus trying to serve everybody. Cause it makes you a little crazy when you're trying to help everybody. Mm. So now, of course, now the kids, of course, left, you know, left for school right now. They're of course, right now in university. And of course that was a big, also a big learning curve for you with them leaving. Right. Yep. Um, how has building your business helped you become a better mom? Building my business has helped me become a better mom because it allows me to be really supportive to my kids and teaching them sort of the things that I've learned about adversity because they're, they're so young and my son seems to be more of let stuff roll off his back. He kind of goes with the flow, but my daughter is a little bit different. You know, she, things get in and it affects her and makes her anxious and she gets nervous and scared. So it's interesting how, you know, the things that I've struggled with in my business and trying to get through barriers and whatnot and how I've worked on problems. And maybe I do get anxious, but then I figure I calm down and get logical and figure stuff out. So I, I'm trying to pass that on to her. Like, look, it's okay to feel things, but at the, but at the end of the day, you got to get back to that level of, of logic so that you can see what are my options? You know, what, what's the best way, you know, which way can I go? What's, what looks the best? And, and I think it's helped give me perspective so that I can pass it on to them because she'll text me and say, thank you so much, mom. You helped me so much. You have no idea. So I, I you know, I think that life perspective, like I tell, you know, I tell them, look, I'm still dealing with stuff at my age. It's not like, you, you know, you have all these problems now and then you get to my age and life is so easy. I'm like, it's not. Life just keeps getting harder and it gets more challenging. Interesting. Interesting. So what would you say is something that you've learned throughout the journey of, you know, growing your business in the last four and a half years, what's been the one thing could even be two things that really made the biggest specifically the biggest impact in the growth of your business. I would say I would, one thing is, you know, having, having a, having a coach. So having someone like you to be able to, bounce ideas off of, make sure that, you know, you're going in the right direction, not going off in a tangent where you might be wasting your energy chasing something that, you know, might not be the direction that you want to go in. It might not fit your niche, like what we talked about. So I think really having someone in your corner that can help you see things from a more logical standpoint, because, you know, when it's our, you know, it's my business, it's your business or whomever's listening's business. And, there's a bit of a, there's emotion that goes into that too. It's like, well, I want to do it this way, but you know, and you see that with your kids when they want to do something a certain way and like, no, you can't do it. Like, you know, you can't do that, but it's, you know, it's having someone 
um, whose objective sort of help you see the lay of the land. So you can go, oh yeah, I didn't look, I didn't think about that or I didn't realize that. So I think that's definitely one. And I think the other thing would be, I, you know, probably making, making mistakes and, and, you know, having difficult clients and people that sort of make you really have to work a little bit harder or figure stuff out. You know, if you have to mm -hmm. fire a client, which I've done, not a lot, but I've done a little, a, a couple of times, you know, and that's challenging in its own way. So I think, I think, you know, problems, I know Grant Cardone, I, I love, I always love his, he always says, um, you know, give me problems. I love problems. The more problems, the better. What, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but he, I know he's always like, I love having the problems. And I'm like, I hate having problems. <laughs> I just want things to run smoothly, but, but it makes sense. The problems are what make you a better business owner, better coach, better, trainer better whatever you know whatever it is that you're doing i love that which kind of leads into you know systems and team which <laughs> you know it took you a bit to kind of get those kind of elements kind of going for your business you know because of course you you know you hired your first coach here maybe over over a year and a half two years ago got the back assistance of course support over here to you know, optimize your business so how important have each of those two things been and how have they impacted your business as well, um, you know, as a, uh, as a coach? You mean me hiring, me having a coach personally or? No, I would say more about like you having uh, your, for example, like from a team perspective, you know, of course you have a couple of coaches okay. of course that work with you. Right. Right. And it took you a bit to hire help. Like, I mean, like hire help basically, you know, to help you on your team. Cause you've been crazy busy. It did. That's the first one. Yeah. It's, you know, you want to, I, you know, I love the old adage. And if you want something done right, do it yourself. So that's always been, you know, I'm like, I just do it myself. I'll do everything myself. And I know it's done and I don't have to chase anybody. So I, you know, I've had a couple of us, I have had three different assistants over the years and it's just important to have someone that can help you with the, the administrative stuff when you get to a point, mm -hmm. cause you get cut, you get dragged down in the minutia sometimes. And it's not that it's not important stuff that has to be done, like billing or, you know, sending a client something or whatever it is. But it might be something that somebody else can do that you don't, as the business owner, don't have to do anymore. So it's good to delegate that stuff. And you know it's done. But it, And then also bringing in a personal trainer to help with new personal training business, given that I don't want to go in that direction anymore. But I don't also don't want to turn women away if they come and they want they need help in the gym. I don't want to turn them away, but I know that I can't be a personal trainer Monday through Friday, nine to five, and be a nutrition coach and all the other stuff I want to do. So bringing someone in and and giving that business, but it took me a while because if people would come in, I'd keep taking them, keep taking them. Finally, like all right, this is crazy. I have to utilize this person and let you know and, and just let it go. And and it worked once I started getting used to delegating, it just became easier and easier. In the beginning, it was hard. I didn't want to delegate, but then I realized I had no choice because I wouldn't be able to, I, I wasn't gonna be able to get to the next level if I didn't start allowing and trusting people to help me. So that's worked out really, really well. And only, I have to say, only two clients, only two people that signed up that wanted to train were like, I really just want you. I don't want anybody else. So, you know, I couldn't make them happy. So they went on their way, but I have, I've also learned through you, because I remember you said this to me, and you might not remember, but I remember you said to me one time, USA, you can't help everybody. Some people are going to leave you. Some people aren't going to sign up, no matter how great your sales presentation is. Sometimes it's just not going to click, or people are going to sign up, and they're going to be like, you know what? I'm, I, this isn't what I wanted to do. And it's mm -hmm. happened, but I realize now I, don't, I stopped taking it personally. After, and I still hear you say that in my head sometimes when someone's like, well, I don't, you know, I think I'm going to go in a different direction. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, why don't you want to work with me? <laughs> but, you know, but I realized I always hear you say, USA you can't help everybody. Some people are just not going to be, they're not going to be the right ones. So it's, yeah. it's being able to delegate and be okay with it and also be okay with people you know, not, not signing on if they don't want to or leaving. So if, well, as far as telling a, a coach watching right now, if, for example, they're a solo coach, they're growing, they've hit that barrier where they probably need some help. They need mm -hmm. probably admin or a coach or some support. 
what would you tell them? I would tell them that, you know, if they need admin help, they should really look to find someone that they trust. Mm -hmm. Maybe they just need some part-time help. Maybe it's just a five hours a week just to give people here. Can you, you know, can you sign up these clients? Can you do this? Whatever, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, find people that you trust. I know you always used to say, you know, I've had a few clients work for me and that's, that always worked out pretty well. And I would say, look for people that, that you maybe know that come into your gym or that you like, or I belong to um, a great Facebook page here in my town locally. And sometimes if I need something, I just put a general post out. Like I just did it recently because I'm trying to get my e-cookbook together and I can't, I don't have time to sit there and type recipes into Canva. So I put an, uh, I just put a note out on the Facebook group and said, Hey, I need someone who's got like a high school kid that knows Canva that can just help me get this put together. And I got a message like that. And I have, now I have this girl in the next town over who's, who's doing, who's putting my e-cookbook together for me in Canva. We're having a call tomorrow and you know, I'm going to, and I'm going to finally get that done, which is kind of cool. So you know, it's wow. using, using those things, asking people, but if you need help, you're not going to be able to get to where you want to be. And you're just going to get so frustrated and then you get resentful. And, mm-hmm. and that's, you know, your business is your, is your first love, so to speak. So you want to, you want to take good care of it and you. There's one thing you're really good at, and that is using the golden 50 in TRM. Like it's funny. You can write an article, go on a Facebook group, be mm-hmm. in Muscle and Fitness Magazine. Just find ways to work the angles for basically almost no cost. Go on interviews and podcasts and get a boatload of leads. Yeah, cool. Tell, tell us more about that. Okay, so I have to say that I think, I don't want to say luck, but I think it's just, I think it's the contacts that you make. And I've been a big... Um, I've been, I've tried to be very visible in my, in the town that I live in, the area that I live in, in Connecticut, Southern Connecticut, Fairfield County, which, which is a very affluent area if anybody's familiar with this area. So it's a good place to be. And I think from living in, living in the community and raising my children in the community. And I know like all the, a lot of the women that I'm working with now are women that their kids and my oldest, my son went to school together and even my daughter. So they know me and they know that, you know, I'm responsible. I'm a good mom. I've lived in the community. So I've, 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 I've been blessed in that sense where I write for a local publication in town. I've written for the local newspaper a bit over the years and going into the gym here, one of the gyms I use here and people see me and it's all about visibility. And if, you know, if you listen to any of the, the people that we listen to, whether it's Grant, what is uh, Grant Cardone's, what's the word that he uses? Um, I can't think of it. It's a big word, but um, omnipresence, that's it. Yep. Right. And you have to be omnipresent. So I've, I've worked that angle and I've also been lucky in the sense that some of the companies of the products that I like to use, I've gotten, I've, I've been able to get to know either the owner of the company, like Beverly International. Sandy's an amazing woman who runs the company and she actually reached out to me years ago and was like, Oh my God, I've been thinking about you and I really want to have you write some articles for us. And you remember I wrote an article for them that I actually forgot about and she on menopause and she posted it the March, March of 2020 when COVID hit. And you remember that summer I told you my phone wouldn't stop ringing off the wall during COVID. It was crazy. Women were calling me about menopause and, and it was just from that one article. So it's, it's just reaching out, I think, and making contacts. And But you know, you know, USA, here's something very intriguing that you're sharing because as I'm hearing you talk about this, I want to kind of address this to anyone who's hearing this right now. It's not luck. What you did is you planted seeds and nurtured them in certain demographics and really you knew who you wanted to serve and it was right. men with women. So all these articles you wrote investing your time into writing and, and Facebook groups and even muscle and fitness. Now you're doing it with them now yeah. is all strategically done that you've worked on. Mm-hmm. And then they just kept, because it was so, such good content and it served that niche so well, you repurposed the content and served them well. So you knew where you were going. It was like, 
you're driving on a map. Like here's an app I want to go and I, I want to hit this, this over here. And you did these, you didn't go over here. Right. You went right to what you know where to go. Exactly. And you know, when you meet people that are, that are higher up on the food chain in a, you know, in, in the industry that you work in, for me, it's, you know, it's health and wellness, fitness, like you said, you have to foster those relationships and just, you know, sometimes I just lob in emails. Hey, how are you? How's it going? How's your family? That's it. Not asking for anything, not asking to write an article, not asking to do anything. And people will come back sometimes and say, oh, it's great to hear from you. You know what? I've, I'm working on this thing and I think you'd be perfect to, to do this. That's how the muscle and fitness plus thing sort of came up. My, my contact there. I just reached out to him and I've known him for a while. I met him at the Arnold in 2017, I think. And and he was like, we're doing this thing. I want you to have a channel. You would be amazing. You could talk about midlife and what you're doing. And, you know, you're credible. You're smart. People like you. You're, you know, I, I remember telling you, he's like, but you got to make all these videos. And I was like, what? <laughs> but somehow I got it done because it was important. And and now I've got my channel and, you know, I'm going to the Arnold's uh, in two weeks, next mm -hmm. week from Saturday, going to the Arnold to be with them and, and do some stuff there. So what's intriguing though, is that's been a contact that you've had for a while. Yes. The golden 50 list. So you yes. took your contact list, you worked it hard, mm -hmm. worked it smart and nurtured and planted seeds over the last three, four, five, six years. Yes. And the other cool thing too, um, Canada is, I almost called you Matt is that would be weird. I feel like <laughs> that's kind of weird actually. <laughs> I know, right? You're like who, but the other thing that's fun too is like, you know, I judge a lot of, I judge a lot of NPC shows and I have a few clients that compete, but whenever I go to a show and I either see like Jay Cutler or you see this, you know, see some of the people that have been around for a while that are, you know, the top tier pros. you like, I always, my biggest thing I would say here is for anyone that's listening, like approach people. Don't be afraid to approach if you see people that it's someone that you want to know or approach them. And most times I, I have to say I, I do it. I just did it recently. And people are always very kind and warm. As long as you're respectful. I was I was just at in Vegas at the A4M conference, which is, a, you know, a, a big group I belong to. And I meet a lot of doctors there and I get to learn a lot and they're very easy to talk to and but the Muscle and Fitness Plus was being announced there. And Dan Solomon, who runs Muscle and Fitness and yeah. all that, he walked into the into the convention center and I was standing there and I saw him. He was with another gentleman and they were having a conversation. And in my brain, I'm like, I have to go introduce myself. But he's having a conversation, so I, I need to wait until he's done. I didn't want to be rude and interrupt. So they, it looked like they sort of had a lull. They were just standing there for a second. So I just walked up and said, I said, hi, Dan, I'm Linda Stevens. I said, I have a channel on Muscle and Fitness Plus. He's like, oh, yeah, Linda, that's great. It's so awesome. And I talked to him. We took photos. And it was a great experience, you know? And, like, don't be afraid to approach people, but just be respectful, responsible, and ask them, hey, could I reach out to you again at some point? Or do you have an assistant I could talk to? I'd love to see if I could write for you or whatever. But... You know, you got to put yourself out there too. No one, I've never had anybody be rude. Like, and, and then, and I think they're usually happy too when they get people get recognized. Well, you know, you, you got some, you're, you're pretty well built. Um, you know, so when they walk up and you, of course, you're in a tank top and they're like, you know, I'm going to, you know, they're like, I'm going to listen to you. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, it's just meeting, you know, just, just going places and meeting people too. That helps generate generate those those contacts and i know sometimes i you know i'm always like ah just stay home i don't want to go like i think i you actually i went to a4m last april or may 2022 yeah i wasn't going to go and i um dr bob who runs a4m i he's a friend of mine now and i know him well and you were like you were saying you go dr gottfried's <laughs> going to be there all these women that you listen to are going to be there like you should go. And I'm like, all right. So I got off my butt and bought the plane ticket and, and I went, but that's when I met, that's when I saw Rob Fletcher, who's my muscle and fitness plus contact. And he, I saw him at the, in the ex exhibit hall and he was like, I'm working on a project you'd be great for. And then that's sort of how the muscle and fitness took off. So if I didn't go, who knows if that would have even have happened. That is so cool. That is so cool. Cause you wow. made me go.
Say it to me. <laughs> I pushed you. I was like, go, you USA. Did. You're like, you say, hang up right now with me and go buy those tickets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's freaking awesome. I love that USA. Well, USA, I, it's, it's so fun to share this story because I was going to reference, of course, your story in TRM because I think it's kind of cool how you've been able to, you know, be in the industry for over 10 years, you know, obviously as an athlete coach kind of first and growing your business over the last few years, but leveraging your network for, again, no big fees, no big advertising budget, no Facebook ads. And you've built a very successful six-figure business, mid-six-figure business based on that and client experience, system money on the back end, hiring a team. It's just cool just because obviously right now it shows you're an example of what's possible by doing, you know, these steps. And I think the biggest thing too is reputation. Like you're, you have to be a person that, you know, responds and answers and has, you know, and, and lives in a, in a good way, like run your business respectfully, responsibly. Yeah. Clients are going to get upset. I've had people get upset with me, you know, and at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm just trying to help you. But if you're not happy, I'm sorry about that. You know, if, if I feel like I want to give them a refund, I will, I have, I have done that. Cause it makes me sleep better. If I feel like someone's really unhappy, I'm like, I don't want to keep their money. You know, and it's, it happens, but I'd rather someone at the end of the day say, you know what? Linda Stevens didn't work for me, but she was, she gave me my money back. She was cool. It, it, it was okay. Maybe she might work for you. It just wasn't a fit for me versus I didn't work for me and she kept my money and, and then they talk trash about you. And that's, I have to say that reputation is huge. And if you, if you work your, your golden 50 or you work your list or you meet contacts, if you say you're going to send them something or deliver, you really have to do that because it yeah. shows them that you're a person of your word too. hundred percent. hundred percent. That's awesome. I love that. Well, USA, I was just full of a story, nuggets, I know. amazing things. Um, just, I love that. So is there any last words you'd like to share before we close off today's interview? Uh, I would say that... You know, anyone that's listening to this, whether they've just started with you and Jamie and the team or, you know, they're seasons like me because I've been around for a while, but you can always can always learn something new. You know, and even if even like someone like me, if even if I meet someone who's a little bit new to the game, you know, they might have knowledge in an area that I might not be well versed on and I can learn stuff from them. Like I never. Like, don't ever think you're. I, someone said to me, people say this a lot to me. So they always say, the one thing I love about you is that you're, you're real and you're humble and you're, a, you're a real person. And I think that's a really big compliment Yeah, that people can relate to you. You just always want to be relatable. You never want to be, you know, when I'm a seven figure business someday, I'm going to be this just like this. And I will, when people come up to me, it's always funny when they're like, it's you. I follow you. I, can I take a picture? And I'm like, oh yeah, sure. I think that always cracks me up because I'm like, I'm just me. You know, I go to the grocery store like you do and I'm doing laundry and my kids drive me crazy or they think I'm a terrible mom at certain times. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm just like everybody else, but it's funny when you meet people that, that look up to you. So just always be approachable, always be humble and just always deliver and protect your reputation. Amazing. Where can they follow you? So what's your links as far as following you for, um, on, on your, on your networks? I would say best place is Instagram. So I'm, yeah. I'm at my handle is at Linda Stevens fit F I T mm -hmm. and Stevens is with a pH, not a V. So it's Linda Stevens fit. And that took me a year to figure that out by the way. <laughs> I, I was, I was doing it wrong and she's like, Canada change it. It's for the oh fifth month. <laughs> I'm like, you know, my name spelled wrong, right? <laughs> It's funny because my maiden name is so Italian. And then when I got married and I became Stevens, I'm like, oh, this will be cool. But people call me Stephens. They call me, spell it wrong. It's funny. but It's been a pleasure, as always, learning from you, hearing your story, as always, having a connection with you. So thank you much for your time. So I much appreciate that. Thank you so much. Hopefully it's helpful to somebody. It was absolutely phenomenal. And we definitely wish you all the best. Guys, if you want to follow the episode, guys, go to at TRM show for sure to get more information about the show guys. With that being said, wishing USA an absolutely fantastic day. They're listening guys, follow us on our show and wishing everyone an amazing Wednesday and week. Take care.